Hopefully I can get back there without too much too much of an ordeal anyway. Like I said, there are these guys are gonna have respawned. And they won't be waiting in ambush this time, these three that are just around the corner here. They'll just kind of be there. So we got to be very careful, because they're all going to hunt me down here. I just don't want all of them at once, if I can help it. Okay, we got that guy. Got another one here. These guys are pretty effective to farm for these, uh, these moss clumps that they provide. Mostly the purple and blooming purple moss clumps are the useful ones that you want. The blood red ones I've never personally used all that much, although I suppose you could. You could put them to good effect. Alright, grab these souls, and let's try this one again. Once more with Gusto. Unfortunately, stone warriors do not count as, like, special enemies that don't respawn or anything. Although I wish they do a lot of the time. Alright. I'm a little more prepared to handle that. If I'm up close and personal with one of them. The Stone Great Shield! Oh my gosh, I'm getting so lucky with these drops. <laughs> I only have one floating humanity, so that shouldn't be boosting my item discovery all that much, but... You know what, I'll take it. And any little bit helps, man. You know what I might do here? Is I might actually equip uh, some fire bombs And see if I can lure that guy away from where that Stone Warrior is. If I can hit this, if I can sort of... It's gonna be a little tough, but I gotta free aim it. Now I gotta go a little higher, a little further. Yeah, there you go. Doesn't actually do as much damage as I would have hoped for being a plant-based creature, but that's all right. And hopefully he'll make his way over here so I don't have to worry about dealing with him at the same time that I'm dealing with this guy. Now I should be able to, there's two of them here, two of these stone warriors. I'm gonna hope that I can just wake one of them up. It seems that that's going well so far, although Okay, crap. This is not what I wanted to deal with, because he's not in a situation where I'm perfectly happy trying to... Oh, crap. Okay, I, I hear a lot of things moving around behind me. Let's kill this guy and get out of here for right now. Okay, I think it's just that guy. Oh, oh crap. I threw a firebomb. I was trying to drink an Estus. I was wondering what that big explosion in my face was. Okay. Just be careful here. Kite these guys around. This is the exact sort of situation I was trying my best to avoid. But it's okay. It's okay. Just gotta be smart about it. We dealt with the bell gargoyles. We can deal with this. I'm in a corner. Didn't realize. I thought I was. I thought I had my back to that this passage over here, honestly. Where am I? Oh gosh, I'm getting all sort of topsy turvy. Let me do my spin to win. This is my strong attack. Oh crap! <laughs> I whiffed on it pretty hard, but that's my strong attack with the halberd that I haven't actually used too much. It's kind of situational. But I think this might be a situation in which to use it. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Alright, drink up. Fighting for our lives here. If anything, I should just, like, run to go pick up that item at least, so that if I do die, at least I don't have to worry about trying... Oh, get out of my camera, please! <laughs> no, they're so fast! How dare you! Give me the Elite Knight set, thank you. That's all I wanted in life. It's a pretty, pretty good pickup. Alright, this guy's gotten off on his own. I don't know where his other friends are. We seem to have separated them for the time being. I'm a little concerned that I don't know where the stone soldier is. Oh, he seems to be having a little bit of an issue here with these trees. That's all I can say. Oh, okay, he's, no, he's, he's back, back in action. Alright, let's be careful here. Don't let him get the best of us. Just get behind him. We're good, okay. That was... A little rough, a little rough around the edges, but we made it. That we did. Got a free blood red moss clump for our troubles as well. Heal up. And I think that is the extent of the items that are hidden around here. That Elite Knight set is a very good armor set, although I do not want to... I, I think I'd still rather stick with my uh, the robes that I have right now, because obviously the Elite Knight set is going to be a lot heavier than what we have going on. I suppose I can show it off just for, like, fashion purposes at the very least. But I'm pretty sure this is gonna impede our rules pretty significantly. Yeah, we do look basically just like the guy from, uh, from the title screen. That's a third stone greatsword. Maybe they're not as rare as I expected. This is what we call a fat roll, by the way. You can see with the way we heft our shoulders and our heads bobbing and weaving side to side all slow. Like, this is not gonna do, man. We can't- we at least can't equip, like, the full armor set. See, even without the helmet or anything, yeah. 
we're gonna need some upgrades to our stamina or something of the sort before we worry about that. Let's go ahead and equip our uh we want our lucky hollow warrior waist cloth for that single lovely shoe. My lucky shoe. Stay with me through thick and thin. Uh, what these messages are probably saying, need humanity and cast her ahead. What they're saying is that in this bush, if you happen to be human, then there is actually a summon sign for a person called Witch Beatrice, who is a pretty useful ally to have in the boss fight that waits for us at the top of this staircase, because you'll see very momentarily just what we're in for here. It's a bit of a unique boss fight for sure against the Moonlight Butterfly, much more of a graceful enemy than what we've encountered up to this point. And we fight on this narrow bridge, which is nothing new. What is new is that this butterfly is waiting well out of our reach. Even with our mighty long halberd, we're not, we don't have a hope in hell of, uh, of trying to stab her. So kind of the name of the game here is to just wait her out. She's kind of acting strange right now. Normally she just starts shooting off her magic blasts and you gotta dodge those. Hopefully I'll be able to do that. There, are, Some of them are a little tricky to dodge, not gonna lie. That's a pretty... That one's easy to dodge, but if you mess up the dodge on it, then it can devastate you pretty nastily. But once she uses up her repertoire of magic and spells and everything, then, and only then, will she rest for a moment at which point she'll land on the bridge to, like, drink some nectar out of some of these flowers or something. I'm not entirely sure of the details. And then we can take that opportunity to land some hits on her. Now, the reason that Witch Beatrice is a very helpful summon to have around here is that she is obviously a witch. She's a sorceress. So she has sorcery spells, which are long range, which are, if you are using sorceries up to this point, you'll be able to use them to pretty good effect in this battle as well. Because, obviously, it allows you to hit the Moonlight Butterfly at a range. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here before this blast detonates us. Here we go. We did get her down about halfway though, so that's alright. That attack I always have a tough time dodging. Not gonna lie. We've only seen really two attacks from her so far. But she does have a third, and I think this is it right here, which can be pretty scary. I'm actually gonna go ahead and top up my Estus, because I think at the, at the level of HP I was at, that attack might have been able to to get me. Just want to be a little careful here. I'm not actually used to this because normally before I go to the uh, to fight the Moonlight Butterfly, unlock and try and roll under that. That's that's my preferred strategy for that attack anyway. Uh, normally before I come to fight the Moonlight Butterfly, I actually go back to the. I go to a certain area. I was about to say it, but I won't spoil it for the time being. And I pick up a shield, actually, that is that has very high magic resistance. And then that is a pretty useful thing to have here, quite obviously. But not necessary by any means if you're just on top of your rolls. Crap. Okay. I thought she was going to do, like, the like the big multi-blast attack. Which I guess that technically did, does count as a multi-blast, but I was thinking more of the one that's, like, a spread. Alright, I might be able to get her here. Just one more hit. There we go. I'm going to watch out for that because I think... Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was still going to detonate or not. But that's victory achieved. First time, first try, boys. First try. First time lucky. Not that it's a particularly hard boss. We do get the soul of the Moonlight Butterfly. Which is a new experience for us. Picking up a soul of a boss. Require many souls. So you can consume it just like one of these other souls. But I would recommend against that. Because you can also see that you can use it to create a unique weapon. That's not for a while in the game, but it is a cool property of some of these souls. Special beings have special souls. The butterfly soul is a creation of Seath the Scaleless, who we heard about a little bit in the opening cutscene. Huh. The mystical moonlight butterfly, which flitters in the dark root garden. Well, not any longer, I'm afraid. This garden, these poor little flowers that the, that the butterfly was tending to, they're going to go without their nectar for the time being, or without their pollen, I suppose. It's a little sad, honestly. I never really thought about it. The Moonlight Butterfly is just kind of minding her own business up here. We came waltzing up into her garden, and what, what did we expect? We're the invader in this in this scenario. We're not even here for any particular reason. We're just here because it's an area that exists. However, when you come up to the top here, you'll find a watchtower, basement key, and a divine ember, and a homeward bone, and win! You can see this is actually... Seems to be a blacksmith of some capacity. Kind of looks like Andre... 
obviously isn't Andre, because Andre's alive and not petrified. <laughs> but there's an anvil and everything. There's some sort of story that happened up here. Probably something to do with Seat the Scaleless, if I had to imagine, but I don't know the full details, and I won't pretend to know the full details. What we did pick up is actually, actually going to be in our key items, I think. Uh, the Divine Ember. Ember for Blacksmith Weapon Ascension. So this allows us to ascend plus five weapons to Divine Weapons if we have the Green Titanite, I think, that we need in order to upgrade it. So we don't have that ability, but we can bring this back to Andre and unlock that ability. Divine Weapons, basically what that does is it lowers the base physical damage of weapon, but it increases magic damage, that, and, it, and that magic damage scales off of Faith. So you might think that would actually be a pretty decent option for us, but... Unfortunately, due to the way that, like, split damage works in Dark Souls, it's not really the best option. It does have its uses, though. Did also pick up the... which one was it? The Watchtower Basement Key? Right here. Uh, the basement of the Watchtower in the Undead Burg. You may remember way back... Wait, hold on. There are rumors of a hero-turned-hollow who was locked away by a dear friend. For his own good, of course. <laughs> a little, put a little ominous spin on it at the very end there. But yeah, you may remember way back when we first went to fight the Taurus Demon, there was a door at the base of the Watchtower that leads up to the Taurus Demon that we couldn't get through. You could have gotten through it with the Master Key, but now we can actually get through that with that, uh, that key we just picked up ourselves. I don't mind that. I'm gonna go ahead and save these souls for the time being, and we'll make our way back, uh, back over to Andre here through the Darkroot Garden, because we are effectively done with that little side area with the Moonlight Butterfly. that That's the optional boss, in case you weren't aware of that. We don't need any of what we just got. It's all optional side junk, but of course I want to show it all off. I'm nothing if not a completionist. That's all I can say. I'm not going to worry about kindling that bonfire back there either. We're not going to be coming back to it all too often. We will be back there probably at a later date, but for right now, it's all good. want to save these humanities if I can. There might still be one of these guys lurking around here, yeah. Lurking is just the perfect word to describe what these guys do. They're just hiding around, well camouflaged behind these trees, just lurking about. Lurking in the garden, that's that's so spooky, dude. But we made it back here to the basement of the Undead Parish. Let's make, let's make haste to Andre, and at least provide him with his, uh, with this Divine Ember. I don't know if I, I don't have enough souls to buy the crest of Artorius, which might be a valid option. That's a rare ember you have there. Yeah. I've seen one of those before. It's the ember of a divine blacksmith. I hope you didn't know that blacksmith up there. It was a bit of a sad sight, I'm afraid. Divine weapons with a flame such as that. Give the divine. Absolutely, dude. I don't got any use for it. Thanks for that. You've made a fine decision. You Look, he's so happy about it, dude. Oh, you can just hear it in his voice. So you can now uh, modify equipment. You can see we could... We only have the 1 plus 5 weapon. So we could make that a Divine Halberd if we had the Green Titanite. But I'm probably not going to go that route. In all honesty. Be careful out there. Thank you, sir. And I think I am actually going to take my own advice. And I just remember, just realized that I have these consumable souls in my inventory. Let's go ahead and use the soul of a Proud Knight. I'm not sure how many of this will give me, but hopefully... Yeah, that's kind of what I was hoping for, for 2,000. Just enough to allow us to buy the Crest of Artorius off of Andre here, which I want to get done. Not necessary, like I said. Opens a sealed door in the heart of the forest. What does this actually say about Artorius? Uh, many adventurers have left for the grave, but none have returned, for they make easy prey for local bandits. With such dangers, the Crest can do more harm than good in the hands of the uninitiated. So yeah, uh, evidently, the grave of... Knight Artorius is somewhere out in the Darkroot Garden there, probably hidden behind this door, but probably hidden behind a little bit more than that as well, judging by what that crest description was saying. But we got that now, opens up a whole new area to us, which I'm not sure I'm entirely ready for, but we'll see about it. For now, I'm going to go ahead and rest at this bonfire. Uh, how long have I been going here? Only about 40 minutes, we're still good. It's all good in the hood. We still got bosses to slay around here. Actually, we might not get to another boss in this video. But we can at least explore the remainder of Darkroot Garden here. Actually, it's not going to be Darkroot Garden this time. It's going to be an offshoot of Darkroot Garden known as the Darkroot Basin. Which there are many different 
little things in the Darkroot Basin that are uh, pretty tantalizing. It's actually a pretty popular spot to try and come to early in the game. It's uh, There's a path through the Undead Burg. I think actually through the Watchtower Basement, if you have the Master Key, that leads to Darkroot Basin, and it's a pretty popular way to go in order to pick up certain things within this basin. One of which we're actually going to come up come upon pretty quickly here in the form of another Titanite Lizard. Although this one's a little tougher to get than the first one we came across in the barrel. Because that one we actually got the jump on. This one just happens to like be here. You can see it glittering there. So you got to run up on it. And if you let it get away from you and do its, do its little thing, then it will disappear. And you'll have to like come back to the area or reload the area somehow in order to get another shot at it. Thankfully, we got lucky there, and our weapon actually staggered it pretty effectively. We'll keep on climbing down the basin here. There's actually a pretty falutin armor set, if I remember right. If we just drop off this little ledge right here, give ourselves access to some leather armor and longbow and feather arrows. I think this is actually maybe the starting equipment of, uh... I don't remember what that class is actually called, like the ranger, but it's not a ranger. It's the one that starts with a bow. It's not the thief, I know that, but it's like something similar to it. But we do have this nice, fancier looking leather armor. It's a little bit better than our tattered cleric robes. And it does, I think, is our roll still as fast as it was? I'm not entirely sure. It's hard to tell. I know there is like a threshold, like you can see our equip load 13 out of 54. I think if we're like below 25%, then you get a fast roll. And I think we were not below 25% with the... Uh, with this leather armor. But I still might go for it. Actually, I'm not going to go for it just yet. And there's a good reason for it is because we're actually coming upon a certain ring that will be instrumental for at least a little while until we can get, get our stamina up. But there's a ring around these area, around this area, one of the many reasons to visit Darkroot Basin. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and equip a shield here. You'll see why in a second. Let me, let me do something, have a little bit of a better shield. Let's try the Knight Shield. It's not as great for parrying, but I think it'll be just fine for my purposes. Um, yeah, there is a sh ring around here that actually increases our maximum equipment load, which is going to be pretty useful, as you can imagine, but it's not hidden behind this Black Knight. However, this Black Knight is a treasure in and of himself. He has the potential to drop that juicy Black Knight halberd, which... Given the fact that we are already using a halberd, you might imagine, would be kind of an interesting prospect. But this Black Knight, of all the ones that we've fought up to this point, I'm probably, like, the worst at fighting this one. Oh my god, apparently with my plus five halberd, though, it's not going to be that much of an issue if I'm that bad at it. Oh, this might actually get him right here. Is that, would he just two-tap that guy? I really didn't expect that. For some reason, I didn't think my weapon would be doing that much damage. No Black Knight Halberd, unfortunately. Just a blue Titanite chunk, which is for a different upgrade path altogether. That's okay, though. Let's go ahead and pick up this uh, Grass Crest Shield, which I think I might ha like to have on hand. I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't bl block all physical damage. It blocks most of it at 95% there. But the real draw with this is that the Grass Crest is lightly imbued with magic, which slightly speeds stamina recovery. So similar to the green blossoms that we picked up, you can actually see the little icon in the top uh, left there beneath our stamina bar, the three green arrows. That is to indicate a boost to our stamina recovery speed. So it's a, it's a pretty popular shield to just like carry around on your back for that purpose. And I might actually do that for at least a little while here. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to worry about it because it does kind of screw with our equipment load. But... I don't know, the more the more I keep talking about this equipment load and trying to like maintain this fast roll that we've got, the more I realize that like in most previous Dark Souls playthroughs I've done, I actually do just kind of go with a with a mid-roll anyway. So I think I'm gonna go a little bit more fashionable, a, a tiny bit more defensive, I think, too, with this leather armor. A little bit more skin tight as well, so we might have to bump up the rating from like PG-13 to 14A on this one, just from this lovely little black spandex thing we got going on in our legs here. And, uh, I could also equip one of these helmets, like the Gargoyle helmet. And I don't think this actually... Yeah, I'm not fat rolling, I'm just having, just having mid-roll now, which is going to take a little bit to get used to, since I've been so used to the fast roll up to this point, but... 
I don't know. It's my preferred play style, not necessarily to mid-roll, but to at least have a more functional and cool-looking armor set than than just something that's like tattered rags that let me let me roll real fast. You got to find that fine line in between that works for you. And for right now, this is what's going to work for me. Chance. <laughs> There's something so profound about that message. So I'm going to recommend that anyone coming this way just hug this just hug the right edge for the first little bit here. There is some stuff going on over that way as you might be able to see. Oh dear. Did we draw the eye of one of these crystal golems? I think we might have. All right, if it's just one, I don't mind it. It's when you get all these guys kind of chasing after you that you got to be concerned. Don't know how he's chasing me so effectively. He doesn't even have a friggin' head. He does have a mighty looking mace though that I want to be very very careful of. Oh, okay, I thought he was going to summon his mace again there, but thankfully, no such luck. Blue Titanite Chunk, that's actually a pretty rare draw from that guy, I'm pretty sure. Despite his appearance, you might think it's a little little more common, because his body is entirely composed of what seems to be Blue, tit blue Titanite. Let me go ahead and equip uh, the Knight Shield again here. Do I have, like, a heavy roll going on? No, I still got a mid-roll, that's okay. Man, we look like a total... <laughs> We're looking like we're preparing for a pretty nasty fight here now compared to what we were wearing just a second ago. But you know what? That's pretty accurate because be wary of headshots. Not sure if that's necessarily the advice I would give, but we open this up with the Watchtower Basement Key. And you gotta be very wary as you step in here. You got this big, clunky, hunky looking fella. Oh gosh. Alright, we gotta have it. We ha I got my shield ready. This is sort of your final test for, like, parrying and backstabs and all that stuff. This guy is Havel the Rock. I'm sure you can't guess where he got that, uh, or that, like, subtitle to his name, The Rock, just looking at him. If you can circle around with him with just, just, like, perfect timing, though, you can sort of chain him into this loop of backstabs, which is usually the way I go about it. Sometimes I try to go for parries, especially for, like, the first hit, so I can start getting him into, the, into this, uh, into this loop here. We've almost got him, though. And if we can manage to finish him off, just like so, I hope, he might be hanging on with a sliver of health. It's hard to tell. No, we got him. Good fight, Havel. Good fight. I'm sorry I cheesed you a little bit, but it's the name of the game in Dark Souls sometimes. We pick ourselves up Havel's Ring, which I'm definitely going to replace the Blue Tearstone Ring with for right now, because it's a little more universally useful, Havel's Ring. Uh, we still have that mid-roll. I might be able to take off my helmet and actually take off the shield as well. Replace that with our canvas talisman again. And now with Havel's ring here, let me go ahead and uh, actually look at the description just in case. The ring name for Havel the Rock, Lord Gwyn's old battlefield compatriot. Havel's men wore the ring to express faith in their leader and to carry a heavier load. <laughs> Don't take that one out of context. We, should, we might be able to actually... Yeah, we got a fast roll now. Because you can see... Without this ring, let me actually look. Well, with the ring, we have 81 as our maximum equipment load. Without it, we got 54. So that's an ex like a huge, substantial increase to our equipment load. That I'm not going to turn my nose up at... At all. And if we follow this staircase all the way up, we actually yeah, end up in Undeadburg, believe it or not. Although I kind of hinted at that regardless, saying because this basement, this watchtower basement, the watchtower that is the basement of, is the one that leads up to the Taurus Demon. Fancy that. We're right back up here, behind this one hollow that set a, set a barrel trap for us. And we're going to barrel roll him all the way down the stairs if we can. Yaw! Oh man, so much more powerful. Look at how well we're doing. Yeah, we're back in familiar territory now.